So now let's talk a little bit about dy dynamic signals capturing the entire story. So here we see an example of um, a machine that is uh, vibrating a little bit and you can see the time waveform. If there's a bigger amplitude on it, bigger motion, but then also if you have say bearing defects within that machine, you generate a different type of waveform. So the time signal represents the exact sound that was recorded. Remember, it's being generated in the ultrasound range and it's being heterodyned down to something that we can hear audibly. But that frequency, the, the time waveform, is actually being captured at that ultrasound level. And so when you, when you are able to look at that time waveform, you can see exactly how it changed over time. So your software should allow you to listen to the captured waveforms, but you should also be able to look at those time waveforms so that you can see periodic spikes, random spikes, noise, uh, impacts or bursts of energy. And we'll discuss those uh, when we discuss each of the fault conditions within uh, say airborne compressed air and gas leaks, um, electrical systems and other mechanical systems. But for now, we're just going to uh, assume that you know you understand that concept and uh, if there are periodic sounds we we want to be able to apply uh, some frequency analysis with fast Fourier transforms and uh, fast Fourier transforms are really a way just to break down the signal so that you can see different components within that time waveform so again the amplitudes of the values in the time waveform are in microvolts, not in decibel microvolts. And so when we're looking at the time signal, we're interested in the patterns, right? What are the spikes and what are the pulsations and bursts and so forth that happen within that time waveform and uh, in time between each of these events. So I don't know, hopefully you can hear that. So as we change the frequencies, we get a different sound, right? And it has to do with what is the wavelength or the period. So when we want to describe what those waveforms look like, there's different things that we want to be able to define, right? So period, that's the unit of the unit of period is a time in seconds, and the period is simply one over the frequency in hertz. So if we have, a, have frequency data that's in cycles per minute, remember that a hertz is simply cycles per minute divided by 60. So therefore, the period is 60 divided by cycles per minute. So in the case of say 3000 cycles per minute, the period is about 20 milliseconds. If it's 3,600 cycles per minute, it's a little bit less, right? It's at 16.66 microseconds. So here's a little uh, animation that will hopefully bring it home for you. Um, so if we have a ticking watch and it sounds like this, That, that period is, we're, we're looking at eight hertz. And so that's eight ticks per second. So as long as the tick generates ultrasound, we can detect it, right? And you can see the period, periodic period, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? They're happening at exactly the same period. So the time between the repeating ticks tells us the frequency, right? So the red lines are the periodic cursors or the iterations of the period. 
And the time interval between each of those is 125 milliseconds or one eighth of a second. So the frequency then is eight Hertz. So tick to defect. So if a bearing defect frequency is producing a repeating or periodic impact, just like a ticking watch, assuming that the shaft speed remains constant. So it would be something like this. Hopefully you can hear the tick, 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 tick. Okay, and that's an example of a defect in an N204 bearing uh, with a known defect. Uh, the race, the outer race defect is at 7.1 Hertz and that's the ball pass frequency, right? So the spikes in the waveform correspond to the impacts between the roller elements or the ball pass and the spall or the defect that's in the outer race of the bearing. So if you were to measure between these peaks, you would see that they were very periodic. And that again assumes that the shaft speed uh, remains constant. So the red periodic cursors, remember the P1, P2, P3, et cetera, across the top of the graph, um, they can be positioned to line up with repeating peaks. And the time interval between the cursor, in this case, is 141 milliseconds. So one over 141 milliseconds, 7.1 hertz. So this is about 425.5 RPM. So you can actually back out how fast the uh, rotation is happening. So when we're capturing dynamic signals, um, when we're dealing with impulsive or intermittent signals, the waveform uh, will be most useful. And so the time waveform here, you can see the variation and uh, really see what's going on. And then when you're dealing with intermittent signals, the spectrum can be misleading. And so when we're dealing with more continuous or repetitive signals, the spectrum becomes much more meaningful, right? So here we have intermittent signals, so the spectrum is not as useful. We can see this. Uh, we were able to then look at the time waveform and use those RMS, peak, um, crest factor, et cetera, uh, to derive good meaning out of the data. But when there is more continuous or repetitive signals, then spectrum becomes very important. So listening, recording, and analyzing. Um, it's really hard uh, when you first start this uh, using ultrasound, um, when you're trying to use your ears, uh, because you have to gain a lot of experience in collecting a lot of data, listening to a lot of scenarios. And it helps you to, to develop your, your hearing sense uh, of the signals that, uh, that you're collecting. Um, so the more experience you have, the better you're able to use this tool. Um, recording signals means that when you record it, other people can listen to the same signal. Um, you can then discuss it, maybe you know, increase their capabilities or your own, um, and then when you have those recorded values, it becomes valuable information that you can use for analysis and diagnosis. So if you compare the same bearing with uh, the same speeds, um, maybe a month apart, and you start hearing differences, then you can tell and, or seeing differences in the data in the spectrum or time waveform. You can start identifying when defects are starting and notice differences in how fast those defects are progressing. So the process also applies to things like valves and steam traps, um, electrical problems, in just the same way that it applies to bearings and rotating machines. 